Okay, everybody, you're going to notice a few changes tonight, so uh, bear with us. Uh, you may notice a couple little challenges getting things rolling here as we're doing some things different, so um, we'll work through the bugs and get things better sooner or quicker. But right now we're going to have our Hour of Power service, and we're going to be studying how to keep wide awake, alert, and watchful based on 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, which says, Let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us keep wide awake, alert, watchful, cautious, and on guard. Let us be sober, calm, collected, and circumspect. But we belong to the day, therefore let us be sober, put on the breastplate of faith and of love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now, you may or may not agree we're in the end times, that's fine. You know, the book of Revelation shows a lot of things. A lot of us believe that's happening. But whether we are or are not, the important thing is that we must be ready at all times. And I've never had a problem being prepared with something. You know, I grew up in Illinois. And one New Year's Eve, I was caught on a lonely road. It was cold, and I didn't have proper things to protect me. So the... Uh, The uh, next day, I had a bag, and it were blankets and a little heater and everything I would need if that ever happened again. And for the rest of the time that I was in Illinois, uh, every November, that bag went in the trunk of the car, and every April, it came out. Now, I never needed it again, but the point is I was ready for it, okay? Now... Whether or not you agree that we are already in the end times as the book of Revelation reveals, let's get ready. If we're wrong, we're ready ahead of time. If skeptics are wrong, and when the really bad challenges occur, they will not be ready. God is warning us to be ready for the second coming of Jesus. Let us purpose not to miss that important event, but learn how to implement what the Apostle John teaches, how to live and remain. Be part of the glorious church without spot or wrinkle, and go up to meet Jesus in the rapture. So that's what we'll be studying in this series of keep wide awake, alert, and watchful. Now, we're not going to use outlines for these Fridays because we have the hour of power. Outlines are a very good way of learning the subject. However, in addition to learning that subject, you can also be accomplished by another method when you read it, hear it, write it, say it, and do it. So I want you to practice this method, learn the biblical lessons so well, you can immediately implement them into your daily lifestyle with an assignment that you will do, which will cause you to grow in your godly authority of dominion to a more confident Christian exercising your godly power. Now, every hour of power, you can have your Bible and a notepad and pen ready to take notes. Note taking is an important part of learning as well. And as we read the scriptures together, um, on the screen we'll have the King James Version here. We'll read that tonight. Most of the time, uh, we use the King James, the New King James here. Read these scriptures together. So let's dive in together, studying Keep Wide Awake, Alert, Watchful Series, Part 1, which is God's prime directive for his children. So we're going to get our four scriptures up. The first one will be Genesis 1.28. Please find Genesis 1.28 in your Bible. Let's read this. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every little thing that move up upon the earth. Now the key word here is dominion. Have dominion. We have dominion, but we must exercise our dominion. Okay? Now, the next scripture is Revelation 1. 17 and 18. So let's get to Revelations 1, 17 and 18. We'll read that together, please. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And had the keys of hell and death. Now Jesus now has the keys of hell and death. What does that mean? That means we can live and remain. Okay? So we'll be alive when Jesus comes. Because he's taken the keys of death. 
and he has the keys of hell. Okay? Now, the next scripture is Matthew 16, 19. Please get Matthew 16, 19 and read 16, 19 together, please. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, look at this again. Give unto thee. Thee is you. You have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You have these keys because you're a follower of Christ. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Okay? And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It is your power and authority that does these things. But we must know this when the devil comes to attack us. That we have the power and authority to stop him. Okay? And the final scripture for tonight is Philippians chapter 2, verses 5, and verses 9 and 11. So, Philippians chapter 2, please. Let this mind be with you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 9, 10, 11. Okay. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Okay. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay. Praise the Lord. So let's pray in tongues for a little bit and we'll set up for the rest. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Okay. So as I read these scriptures, we discussed how we have power, authority, and dominion over this earth. Now my question to you, does it seem as if a majority of Christians are accomplishing the goal of taking dominion on our earth? Is God's prime directive? I'd say the answer is no. You look around what's happening in this world today, and Christians are not taking dominion. And we must stop that. But it starts with ourselves. Whenever the devil attacks us, we have to start taking dominion over our challenges and be an example to other people. Now, what is the definition of dominion? Webster's Dictionary defines dominion as sovereignty, control, and charge, right of governing, supremacy, dominance, superiority, and authority. Now, too many Christians are waiting for Jesus to come down and solve their problems. That's not the way it works. We use the power of Jesus in us to solve our problems. Okay? We have to learn that it's our words and our authority that command the power of what we're doing here. We've all talked about the power of our words. We use these words in authority. And when Satan attacks, you say no. You say stop it. You say get out of here. You don't belong here. And you take your authority. Now, real quickly... Some of you are too young to remember this, there used to be an old show called Dragnet. And Dragnet was about L.A. police officers. And when the police officers finally arrested the guy, they'd pull out their little card and read him his rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you can afford one, one will be appointed for you. Do you understand these rights? If they didn't read that right to the person, any evidence they collected before they did that was null and void in a court of law. Okay, 
Satan's not going to read you your rights. You need to know your rights yourself. There's no Supreme Court that Satan's going to go to, and it's not going to happen. This is what we're talking about. You have the right to take authority and dominion over your life. It's a God-given right. It's more powerful than the United States Constitution. It is your right, and you need to take that power. You need to take that authority, and wherever you're being attacked, be it physical, be it financial, whatever it is, you take authority, and you push that devil away because he doesn't have the right to do it. But if you don't take your authority, he will take it from you. Now, going back to the story we're talking about, if the police officer didn't read some of the rights, and that person never learned that he had the right, that person could still go to jail because he didn't know his rights. Okay? You know your rights. We're here to teach you your rights. We're here to teach you how to have strength, authority, power, and dominion over what's coming. And this is what we're going to do in this series. And I expect to hear testimonies of victories galore. I expect to hear healings. I expect to hear financial breakthroughs. I think that there's marriage challenges. There will, uh, there's marriage challenges. There will be all kinds of restorations of all kinds of people in Jesus' name. Okay? Now, your assignment this week is to use your delegated authority. Take the meaning of the challenge you're facing right now. Now, pray with me with this. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I take my godly authority and dominion, and I command that the devil takes his hands off every area of my life. And this week, I'm binding the devil and not allowing him to attack me in any way, shape, or form in Jesus name okay you've got the power in Jesus now this is called the hour of power because we're going to be done in 60 minutes or less with respect to the east coast people and those who have to work tomorrow so we're going to change these up a little bit we're going to go right into communion then to offerings and then into announcements Okay, but we're going to have part two next week and we have power going through that everybody will be able to win their battles in Jesus name okay praise the Lord Did you get your comedians ready you want something Everybody see RRB, please. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So Jesus, in remembrance of you, we take this body that you gave us, that you broke for us. We recognize the pain and suffering you went through for us. And we do this in remembrance of you, in Jesus' name. In the same manner, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread and drink this cup, you will claim the Lord's death till he comes. Jesus, we thank you now. We've been healed by your stripes. and We receive all that you did for us and the power and authority in Jesus' name.
Okay. And for the tithes and offerings been sent in, Deuteronomy 11, 8 and 9. Therefore you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess. You may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to them, their descendants, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Let each one of us give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he decided in his heart, not grudgingly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in one whose heart is in his gift. Lord, we receive these gifts right now, and thank you that for everybody who's given tithes, the devourer has been rebuked, and blessings pour out from heaven that they cannot withhold. And we're doing offerings. We give a 30, 60, 100 fold return in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now, there's two announcements today. First of all, Kathy McNano is having a birthday tomorrow. Praise the Lord, Kathy. Hey, all right. Now, Kathy, are you 38 or 39 this year? I'm not really sure, okay? So we're going to sing happy birthday to Kathy, and you know, McDonald sounds Italian, so I'm going to sing in Italian, okay? All right, ready? Happy birthday to a you -a. happy birthday to a you -a. happy birthday dear Kathy, happy birthday to you -a. <laughs> My family's Italian, we always get a kick out of that one, so. Now... I have another announcement. This one's a little bit sad. The powers that be have decided that you have too much sleep. And it's time to get up early. <laughs> <laughs> so this Saturday night, move your clocks ahead one hour for daylight savings time. And that way you won't be late for service on Sunday. So daylight savings time does start this weekend. And... Um, I wish you all the best. I praise worship and glorify you. This is even a faster service than we thought, but you know what? God is good. We got the point across. Take your power, your authority this week, exercise it. And just like you go to the gym, the more you exercise, the stronger you get. The more you exercise your power and dominion, the stronger you will be in Jesus' name. Amen. So the assignment right now again is to use your delegated authority Take dominion over every challenge you're facing right now. As you do this, I want testimonies. I want to hear results. Okay? Email them to us. Text them to us. Let us know what's going on. In Jesus' name. Amen.